Hey guys, welcome to a recap of RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars Season 8, Episode 6, Joan, the unauthorized Rusical. Guys, we start off the episode after eliminations, and you know our girl Kahana Montrese. She is counting her blessings. She's counting this because we really thought she was going to be eliminated. Remember, Heidi removed herself from the competition, which landed Kahana Montrese the opportunity to be saved. No one was eliminated, not Kahana, not James Mansfield. But, you know, of course, you got to know what the secret vote what was going to be. What did the girls want and what did they choose? Because remember, Jimbo did not win the lip sync. So it would have been the group's responsibility to decide who would have been going home. And y'all, Kahana Mantris, she really got lucky. It was, oh no, sorry, it wasn't between Kahana and James Manfield. It was between Kahana and Jessica Wilde, which of course, that's crazy that Jessica Wilde was even in the bottom. So it was so obvious that the votes were leaning towards Kahana. So it was unanimous by the girls. All the girls voted for Kahana, took her home, and Kahana voted for Jessica. Even Jimbo voted for Kahana. But you know, a lot of reflection was being made after this elimination because Jimbo, this is Jimbo's third lip sync without a win girl and i can understand her perspective because she feels like as a drag queen she should be killing these lip syncs that's what a queen is known to do so for her to have all these weekly wins and not a lip sync under her belt it's starting to get to her but you know jimbo's gonna come through she's gonna perform and, you know, the other girls are also reflecting on, on the situation. You know, Candy Muse, she's thinking about the impact Heidi may have on these girls. She doesn't want her, Heidi's influence to impact her place in the competition. She doesn't want the girls to, like, use this as a means to eliminate her in future uh, elimination. So, Candy Muse is sensing and she's reading the room. All they kind of you will use it against her for sure it's an easy cop out uh and a way to make yourself a target so i can understand how candy muse she is panicked she's like ah, let these girls now use this as a way to get me out the competition so guys let's move on it's a new day in the workroom and these girls are ready to focus on this competition so rue let the girls know since they walk in and they see the most beautiful pictures posted on the workroom of Miss Joan Crawford. Okay, the workroom is graced with her photos, and Rue is letting the girls know that they're about to embody Miss Joan in an unauthorized rusical. Okay, so of course, Miss Joan Crawford, she is the queen of Hollywood. So these girls are going to be embodying her in different stages of her career. They're going to serve her charisma, uniqueness, nerve, and talents. And through this, they're going to be writing their own lyrics and will be helped by the greatest composer on RuPaul's Drag Race, Ellie Lind. He will help. And then also with the choreo and the directing, we get the phenomenal... Adam Shack, Ooh, let me say his last name right. Adam Shackman. Okay, he is responsible. Let me put up his picture up for you guys. Very stunning. Responsible for hairspray, disenchanted, and rock of ages. Adam Shankman. I like his name, Shankman. Shankman, Shankman, Shankman. So the queens will be working all, to do all this to grace. Miss Joan Crawford, and for the for the today's runway, the category is a night of a thousand Grace Jones. Okay, so we're gonna get some Grace Jones realness in this runway. So the girls are excited because it's another performance act. You know, Alexis Michelle, she is feeling this. Alexis Michelle, this is her, in her wheelhouse. This is what she do. This is what she lives for. And I'm excited to see her perform because she did well in her challenge. But, you know, Candy reflected on her season when she had a rusical. She almost went home. She almost got eliminated. But luckily, she was saved by RuPaul. 
in the Rusical Challenge. So you know she is thinking about this and wondering, okay, she needs to have her redemption. She needs to recover and move forward, okay? So the girls, they do a quick, cute read-through. And James Mansfield, oh my God, the voice so good so 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 good i'm like okay james manfield you probably might get this you 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 will do really well so i was looking forward to jamesfield's performance now lala Ree, she wanted to do the let's go, go jones and she gets that part um james manfield he got mama dearest jimbo she likes superstar jones so she gets that and then Kahana, she is stuck between two parts. She likes wire hangers and also MGM Queen. But you know, the, the other queens kind of pushed her towards the MGM um, part because it's a role where Joan, she's young, vibrant, giving, you know, the most glamorous. So she felt like she fit in that part. And I'm so happy she got that part because we wouldn't have gotten candy and wire hangers. What an iconic part. And plus, I felt like I don't think wire hangers would have fit Kahana. That no. This was this her role is MGM uh queen, and I think that was her best fit. Okay. So now Jessica Wild, she addresses the elephant in the room. She's like, who's gonna want to do country? Because country is a difficult part, a lot of reading, fast pace, and you know. Alexis Michelle says it's a risky part, but she wants to take on the risk because she knows she can handle it and she takes that part, okay? So Candy Muse, she is feeling no more wire hangers, but she's also, uh, but also Jessica Wilde does too as well. So these two, I could honestly see both of them doing that part. So it didn't matter who it went to. I think I always like to see Jessica Wilde because anything dramatic, Jessica Wilde, she got it. She's, her last name is Wilde, so I know she was going to kill that part anyways. But, you know, Jessica Wilde, she allows can't uh, she didn't really allow Candy to get this part, but we do, like, we get, like, a little battle, and I'm glad they did because I feel like Candy often finds herself in situations where she seems like she's kind of bulldozing the other girls to get the parts that she wants so i i like that in this situation she was much more you know uh able to do like a, let, let's let's do a toss up let's let's do a vote so let's do this based on performance and i just love just Wild in any part that she does i think she's always gonna be fun but the girls they all voted and they gave the role to candy to do it and candy feels the pressure because now she needs to prove to these girls that this part does belong to her because oftentimes these girls they fight for a part for a part they shouldn't fight for in the first place it's the part that ends up sending them home which is crazy and a big risk so now we have jessica wild and she's gonna be ax joan and actually i thought it was magical 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 that she fell into this role so now let's get into recording and putting down the vocals with leland okay so james mansfield i love james mansfield's voice so camp, so animated. I was looking forward to it completely. Beautiful voice. Lala Re kills it for me. Kahana, she's giving her absolute best. She's trying. She's putting up a fight, y'all. Okay, she's putting up a fight. There go Lila. Let me guys see what you so gorgeous. So, Kahana, she's putting up a fight. She wants to stay. And, you know, I don't blame her because you want to... I want to see her win, okay, guys? Candy, she delivered. Jimbo delivers and I, I honestly the highlight of this whole recording session was with Jessica Wilde her saying acts as ass I thought it was so iconic and I was hoping they would play on to that I think they should have leaned into that I thought that would have been hilarious okay uh, but I thought Jessica Wilde really was the highlight of this recording session Alexis Michelle she's giving just trained performer like I thought her performance was great, but I was like, okay, that's, it was so by the book. I, I, I just want to see, like, a signature of Alexis. What makes it Alexis? It, it being just signature, but then it's, like, always going to be technical. I just want her to, like, kind of let loose, guys. So now it's time to work with Adam Shankman, okay? In choreo. Look at the gorgeous Adam. Gorgeous, 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 okay? 
So the lady, they're doing choreo. It is always fun to see because, you know, these, these ladies, they're drag queens. They're also performers, but can they dance? I mean, to do choreo is no joke. It's no easy feat for sure. So La La Ri, I'm excited because I feel like she's giving so much face. Like she's killing it in the in the face department. I was all smiles just seeing her work her face. I was so loving her. Jane Fensfield, oh, oh. I was like so nervous because honey, she always come through at the end though. I feel like Jane Fensfield, when you see her doing rehearsal it always gonna look a little rough <laughs> but somehow some way it ends up coming together in the final product so that's what's most important okay now jessica wild i'm telling you guys is the one to be because she ate up this choreo she was delivering she was putting out and you know she was really counting her blessings because honestly this part was perfect for her the movements she was kneeling down she was delivering it for me now, Jimbo, she look a little shaky, y'all. And, you know, I feel like every time we see Jimbo do any choreo, when it comes to dancing and lip sync, it's going to be a struggle last for her. I'm like, oh, my God, Jimbo, you're so good. But, ah, uh, I was so nervous for her, y'all. So now Candy Muse has to prove that she's the one that was made for this part. And I'm just nervous because rehearsal was not rehearsing, okay? So I'm just wondering how this is going to come out in the end, what it's going to look, what it's going to give. But these ladies, this is who we have left. We have Alexis Michelle, James Mansfield, Jessica Wilde, Jimbo, Kahana, Candy Muse, and Miss Lala Ree. Okay, that's who we have left. So it's Elimination Day, and the girls are pretty much excited. Jessica, she's like over the moon, thrilled for the part she has. She's in love. Jimbo loves her part, but is a little bit nervous because, you know, she did go home in a rusical as well in her season. So, you know, there is some past trauma when it comes to rusicals. Now, James Mansfield is excited and um and always is pretty much excited for performance. I never see her nervous when it comes to performance because she knows she's going to give camp. That's pretty much her stick. That's what she's going to give. She's going to give camp, okay? Now, Miss Lala Ree, she's excited, not really for the rusticle, but more excited to give Grace Jones realness. And guys, when you look at Lala Ree, the face is giving Grace Jones. She is embodying Grace Jones. So I am so happy for this challenge for her because I feel like this is her moment. This is her moment, so I need her to step in it and for her to have it. So, guys, the girls, they overall are excited and happy. We don't have an emotional drama moment or anything like that. And pretty much, the ladies are just pretty much talking, okay, what's the strategy? How are we going to vote? Because everyone seems happy, so how are we going to vote who's going to go home? What's this going to be based off? And so far... The consensus is based on performance in the, in this in the week's competition. So who knows? I know it's gonna be a tight game because everyone was you know you know stepping up their kitty cat. So let's see what it's gonna give. So it's time for the main stage, y'all. And I had to go find this picture of Miss RuPaul. Miss RuPaul looks stunning in this outfit. Stunning, 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 stunning. Can she breathe? No, but she gave the look that needed to be given. Okay, so we have all our judges today. We have T.S. Madison. We have Miss Michelle Bissage, and we have our guest, Adam Shankman. Okay, so we're going to get the first, the Joan Unauthorized Rusical. Okay. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Unauthorized Rusical. I guess I didn't have I didn't get the picture for you guys. Okay, so let me talk about the rusticle a little bit. So what I would say overall, let me go back to the, to see all the girls, all the ladies. Okay, overall, the person caught my attention and I thought did a stellar performance is Miss Lala Ree. I felt like that intro that she gave with the face, I was like so in love. And that shimmy shimmy shake and the slap, I felt like that was so iconic, so memorable. Okay, now when it came to Kahana Montrese, 
I was proud that she was comfortable in her space. She got all the words out and she was doing what she did. She didn't have any iconic moments that stand out for me, but I was so proud for her to deliver them because I know that was nerve wracking for her. Now for Candy Muse, which okay at the end, spoiler alert, is the is the winner of the of this rusical. I felt like I don't, I don't even see how much of if it was, it was a bit overhyped to me. I thought she did great, but I didn't think it was like a stellar performance over Lala Ree slap, slapping situation, okay? Now, with Jimbo, I felt like she was more of a background character, but it wasn't giving me too much life. The person who I felt like had the hardest part of the musical was Alexis Michelle. And the thing is, is that she was so technical, so like perfectionist that I didn't get to see her in that art. So I felt like in terms of who had the hardest role in this whole musical, it was definitely Alexis Michelle. Now, I wanted to see Miss Jessica Wilde lean into the ass act. I think we're going to see possibly in the future, we'll see, get a musical kind of playing on to ass versus act. I would love to see it, but I really enjoyed Jessica Wilde and Lala Bree. I felt like they really did that for this performance. Now, James Mansfield, I feel like it wasn't memorable as, at, at all. I think when it comes to like, James Mansfield and Kahana Montrese, their performance kind of get a little bit monotone for me where I don't see how, how else they stand up. Because with James Mansfield, you get camp, but it's always that same kind of campiness. The only thing I really liked was the voice, but overall, I just needed more of a performance. And with Candy, I thought she did great, but I didn't think she did like amazing i didn't think she did amazing in my opinion my opinion okay i thought our standouts were lala Ree and jessica wilde okay what do you guys think let me know in the comments because i feel like this is another controversial competition weekly moment because mm -mm, i did not agree so let's get into this runway so first we had miss kahana montrese you know the girl's gonna give us vegas you see the look there grace by uh grace jones this is the night category is category category is night of a thousand grace jones okay so you see the little grace jones gracie so of course kahana munchies is gonna biggest biggest spy it and put some bedazzle on it i thought she was fierce she looked really good very show girl that's very much her thing and i would have rated i rated this look in 8.7 i think she did a great job on the runway Next, we have Miss James Mansfield, and I thought, okay, fuck the lady. I, you see the look, Miss Grace Jones, she's gracing. But I felt like, you know, with James, I gave it an 8.6, a little bit lower. I wasn't too wild about it. Something about it is not as fierce. Like, you see how in Grace Jones on her head, the, the hat cape is sitting on her nicely. Like, it's melted in. Hers is giving hoodie, so I felt like it wasn't doing enough. I, 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 I'm I, sorry. I'm sorry, James. This was not your night. Not your night at all. Next, we have Miss Candy Muse. Now, at first, when I first saw it, I feel like, you know, Grace Jones ate this look. I wanted it to be more dramatic because you see on Grace Jones how grand this look is. But the thing is with Candy, I did appreciate how she made it more of her personality into it. Because she added on the hat, you see, it's like a K. Whereas in Grace, it's just an exclamation point. So I like that she was making it also her look too as well. I just felt like, I felt like, for some reason to me, I felt like it could have been more exaggerated like how Grace is. But I did give this look an 8.8 .8 for shape, okay? So I thought, I just wanted a little bit more drama. That's all, a little bit more drama and would have been chef kiss for me. So next, we have Miss Jessica Wilde. Miss Jessica Wilde looks so good. This material looks so slick. She also made this look her own. She added sleeves to it. I think I preferred it without the sleeves. Because I like to see the body, yaddy, yaddy. I think, I think without the sleeves would have been better. So I gave this look an 8.9. But I did think Jessica Wilde, she did look really, really beautiful. So next, we have Miss Lalari. I feel Lalari, this is your challenge. Your challenge. Okay, with her, she gave us the most Grace Jones to me. I also 
like the judges wish she picked a more iconic look but i did enjoy her coming down the runway in this look i felt like with her the makeup to me when it was in backstage it was like more emphasized i felt like here you needed a little bit more make i wanted more emphasis on the jaw like more emphasis more Ooh. I just, I, but I gave this a 10. It's just that, you know, with Lala Rue, we have so much high expectations because she gives Grace Jones realness, okay? So, next, we have Alexis Michelle, and I actually did enjoy Alexis Michelle coming down in a runway in this look because I felt like her face was giving Grace, Grace Jones, y'all. It was giving Grace Jones. So, I felt like this was a phenomenal look on her. I also gave it a 10. And 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Next, we have Jimbo. And for me, for Jimbo, I appreciate the outfit, but I I, I, I was not getting much of Grace Jones uh, for me. I, I gave it, it was pretty safe. I gave it an 8.75. I was so super picky. I thought those heels were so dangerous, though. I was like, how could she walk in those things? I could never, but I was super, super, super impressed, okay? So, guys, we learned that Alexis Michelle, she is safe. And Jimbo is also safe. Now, I caught this moment. Alexis Michelle, her face was like, really? Me? Safe? Like, she expected to at least get some critique or be placing uh, higher than safe for sure so i really did cut that and i was like Ooh, I, I i felt like alexis yeah it was safe it was very technical the drag was also it was i liked it it was nice i think she safe was, was a good spot for her i'm so curious to hear what she has to say next week though Ooh, if she agrees so let's get into these judges critiques y'all so first we're gonna be critiquing miss kahana montrese now miss kahana montrese they felt like she gave very much vegas she looked stunning on the runway but now when it came for her performance she nailed the choreo it's just she was not connecting with her face and i'm like don't do that because first they opened up that everyone was super close so they're gonna get nitpicky so I know that this is like, oh, this is a nitpicky thing. I'm concerned, especially with the girls that are left in between and for the judges' critiques, okay? So next we have James Mansfield. And y'all, they said that the fit was not fitting. It needs some editing. It, it wasn't giving refined. And I feel like we're going to get a lot of that from James Mansfield here on out because her outfit previous was ill-fitting too as well and this is the second note that they're making on her for that and i completely agree the fit was not fitting but now when it came to her performance the judges loved her vocals and they and that she blew the judges away they actually liked her performance no no no, no. she was fantastic in performance she didn't say that she but they weren't blown away that was candy muse now candy muse they said that they were blown away with her performance. They really enjoyed her vocals. And I agree too. She had really great vocals. I think this is what really took her to the top because the vocals, I was not a significant muse. That was a surprise for me. Now, when it came to this look, they really did enjoy that she embodied Grace Jones. So that's the biggest compliment that you can receive. And so you know Candy got this one in the bag at this point. Now, when it came to Jessica Wilde, Rue liked that she did the sleeves take. It was something different. They loved how uh, it, the interpretation of the iconic dress was done. They really did enjoy her performance. They thought that she emote a lot of emotions. And I agree too as well. Now, when it came for Lala Ri, I was so nervous here what critiques are going to give her. So they thought that this uh, was actually, this look was actually quite simple. And they wanted Lala Ri to do a more iconic outfit. And I couldn't agree anymore. I feel like she should have done a more iconic look. I feel like when you're doing a night of somebody, you got to pick their iconic looks that they're known for. This is going to be what they're really wanting to see. Now, when it came to her performance, they thought that she was powerful and she ate the role. And I could not agree more. I felt like had she got an iconic look, she would have won this one. That would have been yours. That would have been yours, Olari. That would have been yours. So Candy Muse wins. Lala Ri is safe. And we learned that our bottoms are Kahana Montrese and James Mansfield. I felt for our baby, Kahana Montrese, again. 
again in the bottom again girl it's hard to keep defending you so guys this is kahana's mantri's third time in the bottom okay and this is Jace Mansfield's second time in the bottle. The difference between the two is that Kahana Mantris has at least one win under her belt. So how are these queens going to vote? How are they going to move forward? But I was so shocked, y'all. So Candy Muse will be lip singing for $30,000. And her lip sync assess assassin that she'll be going against is Anjuria Paris Van Michaels. Let's, let's move it up. Let's move it up. Let's move it up. So the performers are performing and, you know, they were singing Grace Jones, I'm not perfect, but I'm for you. So I was eating up this performance. I thought Candy sold Sex Kitten. I just enjoyed that performance and I already knew that she won that $30,000. I like that you she won with her little itty bitty titties because first we saw a big titties win and we're seeing little titties win so I like that different communities is being represented here on RuPaul's Drag Race okay so Candy Muse wins and we learn that she decides to eliminate Miss James Mansfield Miss James Mansfield and she is like shocked she's like oh even even Kahana's like oh I'm like, oh my god, what an opportunity, and what another save. Everyone is thinking, so why she should chose James and not Kahana? And we will get into that next week. I am so fascinated, but I am so happy that we get to see Kahana another challenge, another day on RuPaul's Drag Race. But I'm also sad for James Mansfield because I did like her humor, her campness. So she will be missed, but oh my god, the drama. I want to know what the secret vote said. I wonder, we're going to really see and see these queens be exposed. So we'll get into that. So guys, next week, we're going to have another improv challenge. And we saw in the preview that this is going to make Kana feel a certain type of way because our baby is not an actor. We, we've seen that. And we see that RuPaul gets involved because another queen wants to leave. Like, what is this? Everyone is leaving RuPaul's Drag Race. Like, uh-uh, we need somebody to stay, okay? So, guys, that was a recap of RuPaul's Drag Race Episode 6. So, let me know what you guys think. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, share as much kindness as possible. I love you guys, and stay tuned for more. Bye.